be able to keep yourself together when you come up here to deliver a message, but I, uh, pardon me if I have trouble with it because I'm just so moved by the love of our faithful Father and how, just been reflecting on how precious we are to Him. And, and what do you even do with that? You know, even when there's a sobering correction that he needs to bring, he does it because his desire is to bless us, because he loves us. And, you know, when there's a revelation like this week where the Lord says in a fresh way and in a more powerful way, come to me, you know, if you're weary and you're heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then you reflect on, what Jesus suffered to make that available to us, I, I just, I simply don't know what to do with it. I, I know that I can barely scratch the surface of it and understand and, and understanding, and I don't, even that small amount, it, it seems too much to bear to be loved that way. Today, uh, I've prayed that the Lord would order things because I feel like, Maybe I have a sermonette, maybe I have a testimony, I don't really know. I know that my, my memory fails me and my words are not adequate to tell of how good the Lord has been. You know, I was pretty bummed that we had our first testimony service for a long time and I was sick, or Sarah and I both, or Elise were sick, we were at home. And uh, I was like, man, I have so many testimonies I could share. And then... The main one that I guess I want to share hadn't even happened yet, so maybe it's good that I wasn't here and I'm here now, but I want to start uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Just a couple quick scriptures. The title today will be Our Faithful Father. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousandth generation with those who love him and keep his commandments. You know, it's such a rock that we have to build our life on, that the Lord is faithful to us. He's just never failing. His love never ends. You know, the word says that even when we are faithless, he's faithful because he can't deny himself. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? He always does what he says he will do, and I'm... I know I say it every time I have a testimony that's powerful to me that it, it astounds me that I can be, that anyone can be so easily tempted to fear and to anxiety and stress over things that are so little to him when we know how he loves us, when we know time and again he's never failed. It, it's astounding and humbling and I endeavor always in a new trial that feels so difficult to, to not sell him short in that way, to not, not let the, the anxious thoughts that were attacked with overcome me because I know he's so much higher than that. You know, I feel like I've been through a protracted trial, you know, as Pastor mentioned in the note this week that I guess maybe all of us, many of us have, we know that the devil is always seeking to steal and to kill and destroy us. And I feel like I can look back on many pivotal trials in my life and feel like I remember, I can remember what they feel like, felt like where it feels like the heat gets so hot you can't stand it and then you want it to be over. And then I feel like it's a cup of water that I was used to being at room temp that's constantly the degrees have been raised and you get used to it at a new temperature. So maybe it goes to 120 and then maybe it's 130 this trial to this trial. Well, for two years, I feel like it's been at boiling. You know, we've hit 212 and it's too much and 
there's something about not just one thing, but things stacked up and compounded and then the way it all works together. And I don't mean to sound dramatic, but I mean, it's the truth. I felt demonic attention where the devil wants to destroy me, that use whatever is happening and make it worse in your head than it is. And I felt his destructive thoughts and attacks and You know, in the midst of some of that, I've got multiple testimonies like this. I don't have my journal with me, and time would fail us anyway. But over the past couple of years, the Lord is, I'm so thankful for the, the fire, though, because never has the Lord drawn me closer to him and made me more disciplined and faithful to pursue him and to seek him out and been more powerful in showing up and being close to me when it's most needed. You know, it was just two months ago I was having prayer time in the morning and struggling with some aspect of a trial, and the Lord just showed up, and I could feel his embrace and him in the room, and I heard him say that I'm right here with you, Blake. And, you know, it doesn't take the problem away, but having that said to you, I'm just so thankful and to... To get to the main part of, uh, I, <laughs> there's so many facets and maybe some of it would be too raw or unprofitable to, to make public, but the part that I felt moved to make public today besides that is a large part of the stress and strain and it's mm, not the most of it. It's just a part of it that adds a significant amount of weight over a long period of time as business has been a struggle and finances have been tight in addition to having a, a new baby and, you know, all that comes with that. And it's just been a constant strain and a stress to watch our business, which was, you know, getting by drop over the course of a few months over circumstances beyond our control um, to the feast this past year where it was like our lowest point ever. And I questioned the next 30 days keeping the doors open, like if it was possible. You know, and I did some counseling and lots of praying. And and then since that time, it's still been very tight, but I've just watched the Lord show up. I've never gone without. I've never missed a meal. I, I enjoy good food. I have a roof over my head. But, you know, when there's a certain amount of financial stuff at stake, at stake with debt on a business and not knowing what you would do with that, I mean, it's it's weighty. And so I just within the past 10 days, okay, I've looked back and seen how God showed up and brought us from a really faltering point. Like forever since we opened our gym, uh, I really needed and was shooting for the, Hi. The, uh, the membership number to be at 300 is kind of like uh, my set point that we were shooting for. And we we never even really got all that close, and we dropped super, super lower than ever around the feast. But I, I looked at the number scaling back over the past six months this week, and I think we hit 302 yesterday, um, which is just a huge answer to prayer. And it's not something that I, I, I could have done. Like, you know, I could just see the Lord's hand in it from blessing new advertising efforts with help from brethren to just just orchestrating things like he showed up and he was faithful in that. And simultaneously, our personal training, which was the bulk of our paycheck revenue, plummeted around the time having a lease and then stretching since then. And it was just, I couldn't stand how tight it was constantly. Um, and it was just circumstances that, I don't know if it's an attack from the devil or God just orchestrating something to bring about a certain purpose, but I could just sense that all along the way, like it was exactly the way he wanted it to be. And never have we been able to advertise and successfully increase personal training business. Anytime it's ever been great, it's literally people the Lord just sent to us that hadn't heard about us, we hadn't advertised. I mean, they just came in and asked for it. Like I had to do nothing. And it's been that way again. In the past 10 days, old clients have returned that fit in the schedule nice. Like everything has just been perfect. Like the Lord increased that revenue to a more comfortable position within the past few days and simultaneously I had decided to because it's 
more profitable for me than training, increase our lawn business this season. And I did a tiny amount of advertising and the Lord just exploded it. Like now I have, I may be working too much. I don't know. Um, but the point is, is that the Lord is just good and he's faithful and I'm, I'm so thankful and I just want to give him glory today. And then more than all to me, financial things, like it's deeper than that, but all of that is, is icing on the cake and it's, it's minuscule compared to how thankful I am for his nearness and for his presence. And let's look at Matthew chapter 10. And it just kind of, the thing is, is it reinforces for me how precious we are to him and how amazing a thing it is that he just never fails us. And even when we are weak and especially when we are weak, his strength is made manifest, you know, and he's patient with us in our weakness and, and our crying out. And I love how the scripture says that, you know, when the faithful, when his children cry out, he hears us and he answers us and he's not far off. And where Jesus promises that I am with you always, even to the end of the age, and it doesn't matter if we can feel it or not. It's so good when we can, but just those promises that we have to, to rely on and to return to Matthew 10, verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Just to know that out of all the creation, the Lord is concerned with two sparrows falling and how much, I mean, look at the value he places on us and what he has given for us and Jesus laying down all that he is and suffering all that he has. I mean, what more could you give for someone than what he's given? I mean, what higher value and price could you place on how precious we are to him? Psalm 91 Verses 1 through 4. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You know, just to think about how he covers us when we're hurting the most. I mean, when you watch a, a young baby, you know, run to their mom when they're hurting, and that's just, they know that's what they need to be scooped up and to be loved on. Like, the Lord does that for us so faithfully. And he's never without the provision that we need. His faithfulness is a shield to us. You know, I just, I'm so moved by his goodness. Psalm 136. I think that's something that's amazing about the Psalms and David is how much struggle he went through and the protracted periods of time he spent that way and how he cried out to the Lord and he's just always testifying of, well, revealing his heart with how he feels and then testifying of the Lord's love and his faithfulness. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. You know, his mercy and his grace to us, they don't end. And the word everlasting, it has meanings of antiquity and futurity to where, like, it, it's always been and it always will be, and you can always count on that. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who alone does great wonders, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the heavens with skill, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his loving kindness 
is everlasting. To him who made the great lights, for his loving kindness is everlasting. The sun to rule by day, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And the moon and stars to rule by night, for his loving kindness is everlasting. We'll close in Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord, and the humble will hear it and rejoice. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For to those who fear him there is no want. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Hallelujah.